Good day and welcome to our video series on the course for the baseline assessment and the costing of new policies. Today I have with me Marijen Kaleni, um, an old colleague and presently the head of the IGR here in National Treasury. Um, Mari Jeng, thank you very much for coming. Can I ask that you introduce yourself a little bit to people so that they know who's sitting here? Just mm -hmm. how, what has your background been here in Treasury? Just explain a bit. Thank you very much, Ronette. Uh, as you have said, my name is Mari Jeng Nalin. I am now the head of Intergovernmental Relations Division in the National Treasury, uh, which main role is really uh, oversight you know, over provincial and local government uh, budgets. So we, we are tasked with coordination of these budgets and linkage between national and uh, provinces and local government in terms of how we are prioritizing, how we are uh, budgeting, how we also manage our finances in particular. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the work that I've been doing. I've been in Treasury for almost more than 20 years probably. Uh, and I've been doing different things, but within the Intergovernmental Relations Division, still having to deal with provinces, whether it's on infrastructure, whether it's on fiscal policy, whether it's budget analysis. So I've been around uh, in terms of what actually um, uh, IGR does yeah. in relation to province and local government. Mm. I mean, Mani Jing, with such a long history in IGR and understanding and looking at provincial and local governments, mm -hmm. what would you say is one of the biggest, is, is some of the biggest challenges that you would have in the public finance of provinces? Public finance uh, problem has always been about whether you can maintain fiscal discipline, you know, make sure that departments uh, spend within their budgets, uh, whether they are allocating to priorities, you allocate efficiency, you know, and effectiveness also. Uh, and I think, you know, in the years before we are in this time where we are talking about fiscal consolidation, you know, that there is actually no money to add, you know, but, you know, the needs that we have got to, uh, you know, reach with the money that we have are much bigger you know so the challenge is actually how you then make those trade-offs in between these needs that uh, are, are huge and i suppose the the issue of um, efficiency and effectiveness of spending is probably one of the the, the big issues that uh, you know even provinces or, or national uh, government is actually facing uh, in general and i think it's becoming much more glaring now that we are in a era when there is no money to add you know because we would always solve the problems by adding more money you know but at the moment we don't have that scope so it is becoming you know a big challenge uh, in terms of being able therefore to meet the huge expenditure needs uh, and yet you have got a shrinking you know, um, budgets basically that provinces are faced with. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it is, a, it, it is a major issue that uh, the provinces are faced with at the moment. So within all those demanding, demanding priorities, we've got to make choices as budget officials. Exactly. And how and on what basis do we make those choices? I think that is the problem. that is the biggest uh, challenge now to say what informs those challenges. You know, years before when we were living in plenty. I think probably the, the budget analyst had an easy job. You know, we always just added to the baseline, increased by so much, mm -hmm. in, without actually even understanding what exactly is happening in that baseline. You know, what are we, you know, spending on? You know, what is the quality of spending in that, uh, in that baseline? Could we actually reduce the money because we can actually do that service more efficiently or not? So, and I think that, uh, because at the moment, we as treasurers, it's, it feels like we have lost some power and relevance and maybe importance because we don't have a lot of money to add to put <laughs> into the system. No. So the question is, then what is the value of the budget process, you know, uh, if you don't have? And I think for the budget analyst, that is where I think there is an opportunity that we need to look at uh, in enhancing our analytical rigor you know you know in understanding you know the programs the policies that uh, drive those programs you know the manner in which they are being implemented you know how they are costed 
um, and, and, and whether we can get savings and do things much better. So, so I think for me, it can actually provide people with much good stimulation in terms of something, you know, of some degree of complexity, but which can achieve certain results that you can actually begin to see that actually I can save here and get money to, to do here. Because obviously, yeah. at this point in time, the big thing is, can we save without actually losing the kind of services that we need to deliver? Can we save in such a way that we are actually delivering more, you know? And I think it, it should be a challenge that uh, budget analysts you know, are asking themselves. But the thing is, you need to be equipped in order to do that. I think you need to be equipped because I believe that the, the kind of information that we have in BAS, PESAL, there, there is so much rich information that we have not actually uh, exploited it to actually understand the workings of the programs and whether we can actually do things better. And in fact, I think provinces, um, because a lot of the time is always about whether the programs are designed properly, you know, policy design, uh, and whether, and there's clarity in terms of what are the outcomes, what are the outputs that the programs want to buy, and whether the programs are properly designed in terms of implementation. Yeah. So because provinces' role is actually to implement programs. So a lot of the times, there are many programs that we have seen that actually, national government will develop a program without necessarily having proper policy analysis, understanding, you know, how, you know, what, what we deliver in that program, how do we deliver, the, what is the logic? How, how do you design the implementation? You know, we, we, we put in place things like a delivery of books, material. We never guided in terms of the how part. And then what we saw many years is that each province was doing different things, some of them very costly, some of them well, you know, but because why there was never very clear to say, okay, we want to give students books, but this is the best way of actually doing it. So I think, and, and, and I do believe that we have got a lot of programs like that, yes. you know, that yes. actually can be enhanced in terms of implementation. Mm -hmm. So even though we, they don't design policies, understanding of policies, you know, can be helpful for them to be able to actually assess the design and implementation model of that policy and uh -huh. begin to even feedback to us and say, no, no, but this doesn't work. This can actually work. Absolutely. I, I so understand what you're saying to me and so agree with what you're saying to me. I want to sort of ask you, when you think about the, the concerns that you're raising here and the issues that you're raising, um, the, the type of course that we are presenting, the, the assessment of baselines, costing of new policies, if there's any new money, but the assessment of baselines, is that, that is the type of, of, of issue that you would like us to look at? Definitely, yes. definitely. As, as I'm saying, a lot of the time what we are used to is really about just adding, you know, not really costing the base and understanding what is in there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think the fact that we're going to be using the information that we have already, you know, you are equipping because obviously understanding, you know, what this program is going to deliver. How is it costed? Can it be costed better, differently? Can we reduce the cost in terms of how we do that? Does that baseline of that program make sense? Can we have more of deliver in that program with that money? Or can we cut a little bit and put somewhere and still deliver the same? And what do we need to change? So, so I think, and, and I do think that that is where we have not gone deeper into. And I think that could be a, a, a kind of a, a rich and exciting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, knowledge that can actually make even the analysts feel that, yeah, of course, there's something that we can do that is exciting, you know, yes, yes. that also kind of stimulate them and feel that they are relevant. So, even in these so times. that, isn't this time? In fact, it's even more powerful because they will be able to ask real questions to departments. Yes. Because departments all the time, they always say, no, 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 we need this, this, the, this programs, we need the money as it is. But then because they, they don't know the workings and the costing, you know, you know and, and what that program could look like, they can't ask hard questions. That can then get the department to realize, even though there is no money, there's something that we can do to enhance efficiency. Absolutely. And by the way, I do think that with the current uh, phase that we are in where we are saying there is no money it's an absolute opportunity for us to actually strive for efficiency and effectiveness of our programs 
because in the plenty of times we can't. So, but we need tools, we need skills to be able to do that. And those skills we hope to get. Those, those skills you hope to get. I think this course is going to be very critical to do that. We want to get people excited about what, the work. What is, what is actually very interesting is that in a number of cases, provinces, because they're so in the coal face, mm -hmm. they have realized a number of the cost implications of policy programs and policy initiatives, perhaps in a, in a much clearer state than most of us realize. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to working with the provincial treasuries on that. I just want to say to the course participants that nearly 20 years ago, I think it's more like 19 years ago, I sat next to Madi Jing in cubicles in the IGR section here in Treasury and I discovered Wulandlela and I discovered the potential of how you can understand government spending through Wulandlela. Mm. So that comes along, building on this type of knowledge and insights that we have has got a long history. But I have shared and Madi Jing have really worked around the, the intergovernmental relations and I've shared some of my insights with her over the years. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much Madi Jing. I look forward to be of service to the provincial treasuries.